Okay, so moving on to chapter 17, understanding wireless networking. Um, the, the wireless portion on the, uh, the Cisco exam, uh, at least for the CCNA, it's, it stays pretty basic. Um, you get a lot more in depth when you go into the CCMP and, and they have a whole uh, coursework uh, set you know, for the CCNA uh, wireless and CCMP wireless, all that kind of stuff. Um, you get way, way more in depth. So this is just going to be like the broad strokes, more or less, of, um, of wireless networking. So um, before we start talking about, you know, the the down and dirty of, of you know getting into it, we need to look at why uh, why businesses actually benefit from um, from wireless. Well, first of all, they've um, we've seen a lot of businesses increase the use of laptops and PDAs following the rise of wireless. Uh, which has some residual benefits of providing uh, more resources for employees to work while outside the office. So, you know, it, as a result of having wireless networks in the office um, and, and those different types of um, computers and PDAs, you get a little bit more productivity from employees outside of the office as well. Um, and then the, the, big, uh, the big thing on cost is the, the running of wires for each station. Um, typically it runs between $175 and $375 to run wiring to a single station. And um, generally about 10% of users in a company, 10 to 15% of users in a company, uh, will move around at some point during the year. So you can kind of add up the costs on that. Whereas with wireless, it's once you deploy it correctly, uh, you don't really have to worry about um, running additional wiring. Um, so, the 802.11 wireless standard um, is kind of managed by three different entities. Um, first, you got the International Telecommunications Union uh, Radio Communication Sector (ITUR), um, which regulates the radio frequencies (RF) used for uh, wireless transmission. You've also got the the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineers, the IEEE, who um, pr produces a lot of standards that we see throughout the Cisco uh, course. They maintain the 802.11 actual wireless standards, and then the uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance, uh, which is a kind of a congregation of a, some really smart people with a lot of different companies that ensures that certified interoperability uh, between 802.11 wireless vendors. Um, as far as like questions on the exam, I, I almost think I had one. I again, it, it gets sketchy as to whether it was CCNA or CCMP, but um, questions about like who manages what. You know, they might give you an organization, or it might give you like a, a portion of 802.11. You'd have to identify like which one of these three organizations is responsible for it. So at least having some cursory knowledge of them is is relatively important. Probably only for a single question though. Um, understanding wireless transmission. Wireless seems simple to set up because many solutions for homes and small offices are plug and play, but for larger offices, it requires much more design and planning. Um, so you know if you if you're just setting up something for your house, you can you know buy a wireless Linksys or Netgear or something, plug it up. You might have to do some really basic configuration to first get it set up, but pretty quickly you know within 10 15 minutes you're going to have wireless working. When you have a, a really large building or uh, you know outside area where you have to deploy multiple access points, it gets a lot more complex pretty quickly. Um, wireless access points or WAPs, sometimes just uh, known as APs or access points, operate at half duplex, so only one user can send or receive at a time. Um, and then wireless uses uh, carrier sense multiple access collision avoidance, uh, CSMA, CA, as opposed to uh, collision detection. Um, so it, uh, you know, since you've got multiple users on there using the same medium, um, rather than collision detection, which you may not be able to really find since it's in the open air, you can use collision avoidance instead. And then uh, interference and distortion of signal also degrade speed, so we rarely get the advertised speeds of wireless. Um, even like in a lab environment, those are just theoretical speeds. Um, physical objects degrade and absorb the signal. Um, reflective surfaces like metal and glass cause RF waves to bounce off in another direction. And then uh, uneven surfaces like, you know, a bunch of boxes in a storeroom somewhere or gravel causes the signal to bounce off and scatter in many different directions. Um, so all those kind of come into play when uh, we're, we're thinking about what kind of signal we're actually going to get to an individual PC trying to connect to an access point. Uh, 802.11 uses unlicensed bands also, so interference can come from microwaves and cordless phones in particular, uh, as well as some other devices. Um, you know, most of the, the wireless bands that we're using right now are in the 2.4 gigahertz range, and um, 
there's a lot of other devices in there that uh, that use that. It's it's in an unlicensed uh, band because otherwise, if you if you didn't use if you had to get a license for each uh, band for each different access point, you basically have every single user that wants to have a wireless network applying to the FCC to get their own uh, little group of, um, of uh, frequencies. Whereas with this, as long as you don't have these devices too close to each other or other devices that are using those same bands, you can just use the unlicensed bands. Um, so the unlicensed RF bands in, in question, FCC manages the three unlicensed RF bands in the U.S., uh, the ISM, Industrial, Scientific, and Medical, but this is going to vary in other countries. That's just who manages it here in the U.S. Um, and then right here we've got a, um, a little graph showing, you know, uh, well, the full range of, of frequencies. And then we're right in here, so, you know, on the extremely low we've got audio, you move into shortwave, AM, broadcast, all that kind of stuff, FM, television. On you know the far right side, we've got X-ray, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared. So we're right here in the middle, um, and we've actually got three different bands that we uh, pull out of, the 900 megahertz range, the 2.4 gigahertz range, and the 5 gigahertz range. And so the, for the 900 megahertz uh, band, it's actually from 902.928 megahertz. The 2.4 gigahertz bands are from uh, 2.400 to 2.483 gigahertz, and then the 5 gigahertz bands uh, used for um, 802.11a uh, range from 5.15 to 5.53, as well as 5.725 uh, to 5.825 uh, gigahertz. Uh, higher frequencies allow for higher data rates. Higher frequencies also have shorter transmission ranges, though. Uh, shorter distances can be compensated using high-powered antennas, um, and then countries also have different regulations on on power output. You know, the FCC controls that here in the the U.S., um, but in another country, that's going to be you know managed by another entity. But for the most part, you do have some limitation as to the power output for these ranges. Um, so, in other words, you can't just put a giant antenna on your big building and power it with some kind of giant generator to uh, increase the, the size of your, um, your field for this. Uh, you're limited to putting up multiple smaller access points with smaller ranges to cover a larger area kind of mesh together. Uh, and then for wireless channels, uh, many small transmitters have to be used instead of one large powerful antenna, as I just said. Uh, adjacent transmitters need to use different signal bands or they're going to interfere with each other. Um, 10 to 15 percent overlap is the preferred design. So like right here, um, you know, whether this is individual networks or a mesh of a single network, each of these access points needs to be using a different uh, frequency. Um, otherwise you're going to have you're going to have interference. Um, so if you're using a, a different, a slightly different frequency on each of these, having the overlap here isn't as big of a problem as long as they're, um, you know, those frequencies don't correspond with each other.